Next question is from Josh Core. Josh Core. What are the most common programming mistakes you guys come across that make you shake your head time and time again? Oh, over application <laughs> of intensity. That's the yeah, that's, that's the most common one. Yeah, right? Probably you, number one. Because even as a trainer, I, I remember this challenge because uh, you know clients come in and you're in, we're in a service industry, right? So we're we're servicing somebody who's paying paying you to come in and train them, and many clients would be like, they want the burn, they want the sweat, they want the challenge, and so. You know, as a young trainer, I remember I, I had a hard time communicating with my clients what I what what was better for them to do, and so you find yourself kind of giving them what they want, even if you knew better. Mm -hmm. So I felt like that was the first five years of me as a trainer was you know well they want this, and so and and then you see what ends up happening is you ends up seeing other other clients come because they like that they're like oh man I'd get people come up, come to me off the floor and be like what was that thing you guys were doing? Yeah. You know, like yeah. crazy ass circuit or uh, whatever. <laughs> well, the, speaking into the circuit and it, this follows into the intensity part of it, but programming in high skill movements uh, within like a, a fatigue based workout. So, you know, that's something where uh, you'll see, you'll see jumps, you'll see all kinds of different things, Olympic lifts, things like that, where, uh, you know, it requires a lot of attention, a lot of composure, and you lose your form quickly when you throw those in the mix with something where you're like just going back and forth through all these exercises. It's so important to know what the intention is of the workout and the exercise that you're trying to do. So if you're doing a jumping exercise, the intention usually or should be uh, explosivity. You can't train that under lots of fatigue. If you train it under lots of fatigue, you're just getting endurance, in which case... You don't need to jump. You could just do something uh, that's a little safer, and you'll still be able to work that you know that fatigue angle. That's a big one. And under that uh, intensity umbrella, um, or you start to kind of see this uh, creativity intensity that I like to call right, it. It's right. underneath mm -hmm. where it's like, here's what we're going to do. Instead of doing lunges and curls and presses as separate exercises, why don't we do a lunge curl press <laughs> all at the same time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where you get this combination of different exercises. Hundred percent guilty of that exercise. I, hey, hundred yeah. percent. Same, uh, yeah. Yeah. same here. Same here. I see the same thing where you combine fifteen different exercises into one because you're trying to razzle dazzle uh, the client, and so you see people, you know, kind of do this. Uh, you know, with the pro. Here's another one. This is a super common one: is that they people don't realize that rest is part of the programming. Oh uh, yeah. So, you know, if they if there's a two minute rest or whatever, they'll they'll do their set and they'll be like, I could do another exercise. You know, resting is a waste of time. As mm -hmm. if resting is a break that you need uh because you're just too tired. No, the rest is part of the programming. It allows you to train your body in the way that you want to elicit the response that you want. And here's the, again, here's another piece, uh, another key to that whole thing. Applying intensity appropriately is what get you the best results. Apply over applying, under applying it will get you results slower or not at all. So that's an important thing to understand. That more is not better. The right amount is what's best. Yeah, well, especially it's just, it's just aimless. Uh, I see a lot of aimless type of training where you, you don't really understand what the intent of the entire structure of the workout is. And I think that's that's a lost art. And that's something that really needs to be considered. What are you trying to do that day? Is it real strength focused? Is it endurance based? Uh, is it you're working on a skill? Like what are you actually in there to do? Well, it reminds me of like uh, the biggest loser. Like it's you have this window, right? And you get a client and it's like, how can I build some muscle, burn as many calories, do as much as I possibly, wow them all at once. And what that looks like is a crazy workout. It looks like uh, super intensely based. It looks like you're doing creative exercises like what you're saying, Sal. It looks like what you're saying, Justin, when you're combining these high skill movements with other exercises in hopes that you're going to build a little bit of muscle, burn a bunch of fat. And in a small window, it does look like that. If you take a client who's never lifted weights and you do a lunge curl press with them and you do jump boxes to squats mm. to you know bicep curls and you do these circuits with them, they're going to build some muscle and they're going to burn some body fat in those 30 On days. On accident. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally. I mean, in those 30 days, you'll, you'll see some, and you may even see more gains to that body than the, the trainer who's actually training them appropriately if the race was only 30 days. Right. So that's where I think that's where we you continue to see that abuse and you see it perpetuated by trainers and coaches mm -hmm. because they're like on this, oh, I got to show these people a quick results and change in hopes to re-sign them and keep them on. So it's just this vicious cycle that keeps happening. And then you get enough trainers that are training this way and teaching people, the masses start to think this is what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm.